Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And today we're doing a blind head to head between Wild Turkey's Rare Breed and the legendary George T. Stag. You are not going to believe how this one shakes out. Welcome to the channel, bringing real world content to the real world whiskey consumer. Our head to head comparisons are always double blind. We don't know what's in either glass, but you do. We do this so that we remove any potential bias to even know what we're drinking. So what we'll do is we'll use our objectively excellent subjective scoring rubric to give each pour a tasting score, and then we'll find out what we're drinking. At that point, we can then give each pour a retail score based on price and availability and a consumer score based on whether we would buy it again or not. Let's get into it. All right, let's run our randomizer and see which set we're going with. Four. Four, one, two, three, four, right in the middle there. It's these two, let's go. What's the hmm? Normally all I get is like an alcohol smell, but I actually got like a kind of caramel, caramely smell the yeah. first time, which is unusual for me to smell anything other than like the alcohol fumes. Yeah. It smells like a candied apple to me. Hmm. Like that caramel over top of an, yeah. an apple. There's a brightness there, like a fruity Maybe. brightness and, and like a nice light caramel sugar type vibe. It doesn't smell super high proof. It doesn't smell necessarily low proof either. It just, it seems really nice. <laughs> like a girl you take home to meet your mama. Yeah. Tastes pretty good. Like not mm. a huge like punch, but like you, there's some stuff going on. I don't know what I taste, but it's. Yeah, there's good flavors there. Like the caramel definitely to me is the predominant note that's still hanging around i'm still getting a finish on it right now mm -hmm. like i'm trying to talk through it yeah but it's it's lingering and the the back end of it is sweet it's not super heavy handed but it's just really pleasant mm -hmm. that's a really good pour i like that yeah it's got it's got some kick to it but it's not like i don't say i don't think it'd be cinnamon no i think it's it's the oak from the barrel mm. like you're getting that little bit of there's not a it's not necessarily a spice but there's a little bit of i think it's coming from the proof mm, okay you're getting a little bit of that yeah mm -hmm. i'm getting just more of the caramel on the nose now and after a, a little sip. burning in the back of my throat yeah it's it's got some it's not low proof it's not super high proof yeah. i don't think but it's got it's got a healthy proof point on it <laughs> i like it this is to it's me a, it's a healthy it's healthy broad. Yeah. This to me is like about the perfect proof point. It lets you know it's there, mm. but it doesn't assault you. Mm -hmm. This is a really, this is, this I'm is liking good. this quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. More of the caramel, brown sugar, and just that oaky finish is sticking around. That second sip, the oak went a little bit more bitter on the back end, but not necessarily in a bad way. It's just making its presence known. And I, I like that quite a bit. Very, very interesting yeah. on glass one. All right, let's get into glass two. Oh, this seems sharper on the nose. I'm getting more astringency from the second glass. I am too, but that's not unusual for me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's more proof or if it's, it doesn't smell like spice. It just, it smells a like, little bit more astringent, yeah. potentially even a little bit more out of balance, but. Oh, this is one of those ones that has a rubbery taste to yeah. me. Yeah. Not bad. Like when I first taste it, just on the roof of my mouth, I, it's like a very faint, like rubber yeah like soft rubber does that make sense i don't i don't know what that is i've, I've heard people say like pencil erasers mm, things like yeah that. i can see that but i almost think like i've said this before like a kid's yeah. shoe like yeah. the way they smell when they're new yeah i'm getting more spice on this not like the type of spice that's burning you up but there's just like a spicy little tingle going on on this one that the first glass didn't have mm. i feel like I'm not getting much on the nose no. other than that astringency. That's a little bit of like, 
a little bit of an apple juice note, but it's it's like a sharp note to there. I feel like this burns a little bit more. And does that m mean it's probably higher proof? Could be, yeah. Or it could like, be out of balance. Like mm. if it's not a, a well balanced Ooh. whiskey, it's like burning down here. It definitely, yeah, yeah. It's definitely you definitely feel it. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. I, I mean, I am liking. I'm liking both of these pours quite a bit. I'm gonna smell them. I feel like for me, after I've had both of them and then I smell them again, the smells open up even more. Is that is that usual or am I making that up? No. I mean, if you're if that's what you're experiencing, you're not making it up. Yeah. Because I like, after that drinking was... this one and then smelling this one and smelling yeah. this one, I smell more on this one. I mean, tasting is so subjective that if, if whatever you're getting, that's what you're getting. Yeah. Like I can get the apple juice smell on glass two now. Yeah. I don't and get I'm just it getting straight three. caramel on glass one. Mm -hmm. It's it like sugary sweet glass, to me. Glass, glass one, one is definitely more approachable on the nose. Glass two is definitely more stringent on the nose. Glass two definitely gives you the, it. Like you feel it. Yeah, you feel it all the way down your gullet. <laughs> it's like medicinal. Yeah, but the they're both good. Mm -hmm. They're both good. They're just different. This is going to be a tough one. I feel like it's going to be a really tough one to score. It's gonna be tough to pick a favorite. Yeah, we'll have to do some, a little more sipping. Yeah. We're gonna do some A-B comparisons yeah. between these two. We're gonna take some time to clear our palates, score them properly. We'll be back with their tasting scores, which one's our favorite, and we'll let you guys know the information right after this. Right after these messages from our sponsors that we don't have. All right, let's get into our tasting scores. Our scoring system is based on a very simple, common sense thumbs up system where one thumb equals one point, two thumbs equals two points, just okay is worth half a point. Everything is scored on the three categories of nose, flavor profile, and experience on the palate. And there's six possible points if something were to get two thumbs up in all three of those categories for tasting score. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, glass one, what were your tasting scores? Okay, so it was tough. But I ended up giving it a thumbs up for nose, flavor, and experience. So one thumbs up across the board. So for a total score of three out of six. I was so close to giving it two thumbs up on experience on the palate. Interesting. Because overall, I really enjoyed drinking it. Um, but I'm really stingy with my two thumbs up. Yeah. So, I think common sense dictates that thumbs up is something that's good or even really good. Yeah. But two thumbs up really should be reserved for the best of the best, yeah, the, and the I, greatest thing. I feel like I haven't had enough whiskey to know what's two thumbs up yet. Yeah. So I'm going to save, save it. But I will say I gave it one thumbs up on nose. But that being said, this is the first whiskey that I've smelled that hasn't blown me away with the ethanol smell right away. Like I've smelled something else, yeah. which that's a first. So could have given it two thumbs up there. But again, I'm stingy. So three thumbs up three points yeah and i gave glass one two thumbs up on the nose okay i get that i gave it thumbs up on the flavors thumbs up on the experience mm -hmm. i was actually very close to giving this two thumbs up across the board wow i think if it had a little bit more proof on it mm -hmm. it was so balanced mm -hmm. it was such an enjoyable sip yeah and I could keep going back to the nose. It I would prefer a little bit more complexity on the nose if I could get it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the best nose despite how big this thing is. <laughs> but I the caramel coming off of this thing, like it yeah. smelled like a caramel chew. And I could just keep going back to that nose all day long. Yeah. I love that. Like I would I would be ha perfectly happy smelling this and not even drinking it. It's that good on the nose. Wow. So two thumbs up there. Okay. I gave it a thumbs up on flavor. I almost went two thumbs up, but I just wish it had a little bit more oomph to it. Yeah. And experience, I gave it a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. The finish was really nice and long. I just wish, again, it had a little bit more oomph to it. So that gives glass one a four out of six possible points on nice. tasting score for me. So you had glass one at a three. I had glass one at four out of six. Yep. Where are you at on glass two? Okay, so this is gonna seem controversial, but I also gave it one thumb up across the board for every everything. Yeah. Um, so it has a possible three out of six. Um, but so the nose, I smelled alcohol at first, which is typical for me. But once I smelled them back to back, then this opened up a, a bit more for me, um, the nose. Um, 
there was lots of flavor there and it was an experience. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was a pleasant experience, but there was one. So I'm not going to give it a thumbs down because I feel like if you like something that's strong, then that would be really good. So I did give it a thumbs up because I did get an experience and uh, there was lots of flavor to be had, even though to me it tasted like kids. Yeah. Um, so Gla yeah. I mean, Gla while we what were on you? break doing our scoring, Glass 2 assaulted me. Like, it, Yeah, it did. It, he had to get up and like it, walk away and get some water. It burned my esophagus. <laughs> There's a, There's I, no way that's not a high proof. I would be stunned if this were under 120 proof. I I wouldn't be surprised if this were over 130 proof. There's just a lot. There's a lot going on in glass too. And if you and like that really sort good. of thing, then it is really this good. Is, I mean, it. you've got that apple juice note on the nose, mm -hmm. and you, the nose is really nice now that it's opened up. For yeah, me. you have some some caramel there too, kind of mm -hmm. your typical bourbon caramel vanilla. There's a lot going on in the nose of glass too. I only gave it a thumbs up on the nose because of the astringency coming off of it. Mm -hmm. Glass one seemed more balanced on the nose, whereas glass two seemed a little bit, you know, <laughs> unfiltered. Like it was just, it, was, it didn't mind coming after you. Yeah. As if it didn't have that astringency, I would have gone two thumbs up, but just one thumbs up on the nose for me. On the flavors, I gave it one thumbs up again really good flavors it just wasn't quite enough to go two thumbs up on the flavors mm -hmm. the experience i gave it a thumbs up as well so that's glass two thumbs up across the board for me three out of six possible points i did get a lot more cinnamon on the palate on glass two okay and i really did like that but the that proof that attacking proof or what i assume is the proof coming yeah. after me like it did yeah. Uh, I like that sometimes, but it's Tem a tempered down a little bit. Just a little, like it's it's cranked up to eleven, and like let's dial it back to like ten and a half. It's it's a little mm. little much. Yeah, and it's so close to being exceptionally great, mm. but it, it inevitably it just lands it's just good for me. So for me, it's pretty obvious. I gave glass one a four out of six. I gave glass two a three out of six. Glass one was my favorite of the two glasses. You gave them both three out of six yes. scoring. So which glass was your favorite? Well, the one, so I think they're both good. They both have good nose. They both have flavor. They both provide an experience. But I enjoyed the experience of glass one more than the experience of glass two. Yeah. Um, the glass one is one that I feel like I could sip you know, slowly on a porch, whereas glass two would be like a, hey, let's do this one drink one time and have an experience, yep. but I'm not gonna sip it on a porch with friends hanging out. Like this is a one time event and yep. this is like a, I'll drink this over a period of time for a night. Yeah, yeah. I would, if you're asking me which one I'd rather have another pour of, it's it's glass one. Same. So that's my favorite. So. Same. We I agree. Can't wait. I can't. We do agree. I can't wait to find out what these are. I know. Let's find out what these are. So we got our sample jars here, corresponding to glass one and glass two. two. We both preferred glass one. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what glass two is. Okay. Glass two is number ten. Number ten. <laughs> glass one is number eleven. Okay. I just looked and saw what these are. Do you have any idea? Do you want to take a guess? Do you know? <laughs> oh man. Or should, do you not want to? You don't have to. No, I, so we don't know what we're drinking when we're doing this. We picked these blind. Yeah. I purposefully try not to think about what we're drinking while we're doing the assessments yeah. because I want to give each thing a fair shake. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm just going off my gut reactions. I poured these and corresponded the labels to them. Mm -hmm. And then you mix them up and, and put them in the them. sample box and then we draw them at random so we don't know what's what. Right. But I do know that 10, if I'm not mistaken, is George T. Stagg, glass one. Is it rare breed? It is rare breed, which makes sense. That <sighs> is one of our favorites. I almost gave I almost gave glass one a two across yeah. the board, two thumbs up And I the almost board. gave it two thumbs up, but again, I'm really stingy with my two thumbs up. As am I. As which am is I. good because had I known it was rare breed, I yeah. would have given it two thumbs up. Yeah. So it's good that I didn't know. That's why we do it blind. Yeah. Because you get our actual honest opinions separate and apart from any bias. If I would have known this was George T. Stagg, I would have given it two thumbs up. If I would have known one of these was George T. Stagg, I would have been given out two thumbs up immediately to everything that was any yeah. anything worth anything because 
George T. Stagg is George T. Stagg. So proof point, this definitely tasted higher proof. Yes. Is it? And it is. Okay. This is 130.4 proof. Okay. You I said right. it would be stunned if it was under 120. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was over 130. 130.4. Mm-hmm. Rare breed is 116.8. Okay. And that makes sense that this was so much easier, so much more approachable. And I kept wanting to go back to mm-hmm. it. And yeah, I, like I said, I, I keep sipping this over a period of time with friends. Yeah. You know, the funny thing about this is that every time I've ever had rare breed, if I were going to mark it down on something, it would be on the nose. I tend to feel like the nose on rare breed leaves me wanting a little bit. Hmm. Tonight, it didn't. Tonight, yeah. it was its standout feature. And again, that just goes to show you that even on different days, based on how you're feeling, uh, the, the barometric pressure, I don't know, <laughs> your mood, what you've eaten. What you've just eaten, yeah. All those things can affect your palate. And tonight, Rare Breed was hitting on all cylinders on the nose for me. And the palate and the experience, like the flavors, the experience on the palate, they were just shy of being two thumbs up across the board. But I did think about giving this two thumbs up across the board. Yeah, I did too in a a couple categories. So, And then George T. Stagg, like it's... Like you're getting like all the the. There's a lot the, going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and it's good, but it is it's that high proof. It gets a little out of balance. Mm-hmm. This is funny that that this is in this blind. George T. Stag was in two blinds, one against Stag Junior, which mm. just happened previously. Yeah. In a in a previous blind, we'll which link we'll, that we'll link up in here. The cards on but these sides. It's always on this side, right? I don't know. We're new here, so okay. don't mind us. Yeah. But. I uh, had it against Stag Jr. Yeah. Because George T. Stag and Stag Jr. are from the same product family. And then I also put it paired against Rare Breed because Rare Breed's a barrel proof bourbon mm-hmm. that we really enjoy. And you guys have heard us talk about it on this channel before how much we like Rare Breed. Yeah. And I wanted to see how Stag measured up to what I consider to be a yardstick bourbon at mm-hmm. $50, barrel proof such a huge fan that I never would have given a second look before I started doing blind tastings. I just didn't give Wild Turkey products the time of day before I started doing blind tastings. And then I found out that I really, really like Wild Turkey products. And that that just bared itself out yet again, how much I like Wild Turkey products. Very consistently. Let's give these our retail and our consumer scores. Okay. I notated that I would absolutely buy either one of these again without question. Mm -hmm. So that was thumbs up for me on consumer score. Okay. But we need to talk about pricing first before we make that. Well, final I decision. saw the pricing when on when I looked at it on the yeah. phone. So it looks like George T. Stag is about a hundred dollars. George T. Stag is a hundred dollars, but it's unobtainium. You can't get it unless you win it in a raffle. Okay. Unless you spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands at a store and they hold one back for you. Wow. So on the secondary market, people resell George T. Stagg, if they win it in a raffle or something like that, they'll they'll pay $100, $150, $200 for it. They'll turn around and sell it for six or $650. I could get five bottles of George T. Stagg tomorrow in our market, but I'm going to pay six or $650 for each one. Yeah. So glass two for retail score, because of such limited availability, I have to give it a thumbs down. Mm-hmm. Because for that limited availability, and the price that you're going to pay to get your hands on it on the secondary market. Yeah. And it's released once a year. I have to give it two thumbs or (laughs) not two thumbs down, (laughs) just one thumb down. We don't offer two thumbs down. We're not taking points away. Yeah. I feel like I agree with you there on, on this one. However, that being said, if I could get it for $100, I would buy it all day. I, I wouldn't buy it all day. I would buy it to have, if I wanted to have an experience with a friend yeah. or something, it would yeah. not be the, the, the whiskey I would drink every night or every weekend yeah. or pull out on the reg. I would, it would be like, this is a really fun bottle. Do you want to try some yeah. of this? That would, yeah. but not $600. This is, so, the, this is the roller coaster that you get on that, you know, you might pee on yourself a little <laughs> bit while you're do riding you, it. Do you do that on roller coasters? I mean, I did when I was drinking this <laughs> just a little bit, That's but, fair. but that's fair. So. Yeah, I'm gonna give it. You're you're, you're buckling up and, yeah. and fastening your lap belt a little tighter for this yeah. one. So, if I could get it for a hundred, I'd absolutely keep a bottle of it around. But that's just not the way it is. Yep. I got lucky to get this in a raffle. Yeah, and I paid a hundred and ten dollars for it. I'd keep a bottle on hand at mm-hmm. that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna give glass two a thumbs down on a retail score. But glass one, rare breed, is available on shelves all over town for fifty bucks. 
It's a barrel proof bourbon, uncut, unfiltered at $50. And I love it. I got to give it two thumbs up. Yeah. And this just goes to show you how biased you can be once you know what something is, because yeah. I am giving it two thumbs up. But I'll give it a two, even on retail scores. $50 so, for a really, what I consider a really good glass. Yeah. Easy to drink, but yet complex enough. Like easy to drink for someone like me who's not super whiskey savvy, but complex enough for someone who might be a little more, you know, into it. I don't know. It's it's a, just a really good all around. I'm really surprised that Rare Breed, this, this they were both very good, but it, this wasn't a close call for me like i definitely prefer glass one i'm surprised that rare breed smells deeper and richer than than george t stag it smells more bright i'm going off our scoring for a second but i'm just i'm very surprised how maybe. bright george t stag smells and maybe some of that's the proof in the insurance but retail score on rare breed we're both two thumbs up yes and Consumer score, would you buy it again? Would you go out of your way to buy it? Would you buy multiple bottles of it if it were being discontinued? I would buy multiple bottles of it if it were being discontinued. I would as well. I, and, and if I couldn't get my hands on this and we were out of it and I really wanted it and I know I could go pick it up across town for 50 bucks, I'd drive across town to get it, to mm -hmm. have that bottle. That's mm -hmm. a good bottle. To me, I'd go out of my way or if it were being discontinued, I'd buy multiples. That's two thumbs up for me. Glass two. It gets a thumbs down on retail score just Same. because of the such limited availability and the crazy high prices on secondary. Consumer score, would you buy it again? I would absolutely it, buy it again if I could. It depends on the price for me. Yeah. If it was $100, yeah. Yeah. If it was $600, no. Well, I'm going to give it a thumbs up because I'd buy it again if I could get my hands on it at retail or close to retail. So for me, that's a thumbs up. I would buy it again. Now, I can't just go buy it again because it's not available, but I'm not going to pay over much yeah. over retail for it. I'm going to so. do just okay for consumer score on that one because, because of the yeah. variance and the lack of availability. That's fair. So adding this all up, we've got rare breed for me is scoring an eight out of 10, seven out of 10 for me. And George T. Stagg is scoring a four out of 10. Got 3.5 out of 10. For George C. Stagg. Significantly handicapped because of its limited availability yep. and high price on the yep. secondary market. For sure. And for us, for our real world score, that's the whole point yep. is it's taking into fat. It's like factoring in the price, the availability and whether you'd buy it again or not. Mm -hmm. So the this wasn't close. They were both no really contest. good. Yeah, they but, were both really good in different ways. Yeah. But I'd rather have another pour of this all day over that. Even if I do wish this were just I'm cranked up just a little gonna bit. Gonna have another sip of this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm a little stunned that George, the two blinds that out of our entire paired up blind sample pool that George T. Stagg came up twice so early, but. It, and it lost it, both it, times. It did lose both times. I, well, actually I it lost to Stagg Jr. and it lost to Rare Breed for me. You did pick George T. Stagg over Stagg Jr., but once you found out how much they cost and the availability yeah, issues, I was, you changed your tune yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you're more practical. But if I were in your shoes and had picked it, I'd have stuck by my guns, but that's because I'm stubborn and I'm also willing to pay more than you are yeah. for whiskey, yeah. which is why I do the whiskey shop. And otherwise we just have a cart full of rare breed and a bunch of rye. And a so, rye whiskey, yeah. <laughs> wow, guys. I... I mean, what what more can we say? Yeah, this was this was shocking. This was fun. Yeah, let's do it so, again. We will do this again. We'll be back with another blind head to head soon. We love doing these. This is really one of the bigger parts of why we started this channel yeah. because we have so much fun doing this, and we wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. How much fun we have doing this is only amplified by the fact that you guys know what we're drinking while we're talking about it, and you get to see us yeah. make absolute fools out of ourselves. <laughs> for like dissing bourbon that is, you know, hugely hyped and everything. And then you, but you also get our honest opinions yeah, about it. And we sure. hope that if that's at the minimum entertaining and hopefully informative for yourself as well. Absolutely. So that's it for this week, guys. We'll be back with another one of these really soon. Aaron, take us out of here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like this video, which I hope you do, give it a good thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can keep seeing more content like this. Cheers guys. Cheers.